Hello to everyone. How are you? I am Sacred Para, and this is Gloria with me today. And today we have an awesome person who's going to be joining us. And if you've seen my um, flyer, my virtual flyer, you would have already have known that we have Catherine CPI who's going to be here with us. Yay! So I'm going to be phoning her in so that we can discuss storyline content creation today. Hello, how are you, Dolls Buzz? Hello, there goes Catherine, so I'm going to be phoning her in. But um, today, it is a little bit of an early live. I will make sure to save this live, so just in case you're used to um, joining me at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you'll still be able to see it, but it'll just be a, a, a repeat. So without further ado, let me phone her in. I am very excited what we have going on today, and Dolls Buzz is here, so that's awesome. All right, let's see if we're going to be able to uh, connect. Hello again. I always enjoy Dolls Buzz. Every time I see Dolls Buzz, um, <laughs> Paul's, it always makes me want to watch uh, a whole marathon of um, Mulder and Scully. Always. In case you don't know who Mulder and Scully is, that is X Files. Hello, Yay. how are you? It's so good to see you. Thanks. Fine. How are you? I'm doing good. And this is hello, husband. This is your first IG live, right? Yes. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and it's so good seeing you. So, as I was telling everyone, you have Catherine CPI. Yeah. And I know that you have wrote me a, a short amount of, of information about how you end up writing and, you know, just like a little bit of a background. So that's what we'll be discussing today together. Hello, it's a Mad uh, World NYC. Well, my question is, what is your background as a writer? We're going to go right into it because the story that you wrote that you gave me was so interesting, so I wanted everyone else to be able to hear it. <clears throat> I don't really have a background as a writer, but uh, I've been writing since my teenage years, uh, about 20 years right now. <laughs> wow. Yes, uh, it's a long time, and it goes back to the 80s. And I always enjoyed writing, and uh, I have a lot of uh, stories at home written stories for myself and uh, yes I, I keep them private <laughs> well we're glad that you do share Catherine with us <laughs> uh, now with Catherine how did you come about writing her uh, that dates back to my teenage years she's always been uh, a private investigator back in my yes <laughs> She's okay. the girl from my childhood, and she always was a PI. <laughs> wow! Yes, <laughs> which explains more of how she has this personality that's so strong. And right now, as we see, she's in a situation as far as having to go to the funeral, and and she just has like this this superhuman strength as far as being able to push through it. So, are we going to see? more of her being investigative yes uh, or is that... <laughs> yeah, it's difficult <laughs> i don't want you to tell anything either <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I do see her having that and, and i and i would think to be married to someone that is a police officer you would kind of have to have this intuitive strength within yourself. So we do see that with Catherine, that she does have that. Um, what made you decide to have Catherine? Because I, when I had talked to you in regards to the flyer, and then you gave me your picture with your mini-me, and I was like, oh, wow, okay, so I didn't know that you had a mini-me. <laughs> and uh, now what made you decide to go that route with, with the mini-me, um, well, well, with using Catherine instead of your mini-me? Um. I prefer blonde dolls. I really, okay. I, I really prefer blonde dolls. Uh, I do have a small mini me, but 
I, yes, I don't know why, but it's, it's just a personal thing. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's totally fine. Because that's like really what, what we're talking about when it comes to storyline creation is being able to create a world that you enjoy. So uh, maybe, sorry, uh, maybe I used to because she always was my favorite doll in my childhood. Uh, so she's one of my favorites and uh, well, because that's why I used her. <laughs> she's still in funeral mode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have someone, Dallas Buzz says, I like the whole storyline and theme yes of Catherine cpi yes yes we all do it's really an enjoyable um storyline and just all the different twists and turns that you have how do you come up with that <laughs> <laughs> how do you come up with that because you have a lot of different twists. like as soon as we think um you know like we think that your your the husband darren is, is his past and you go through this whole whirlwind of emotions with her and this is just like in recent posts. And then you, he pops back up and it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I was starting to want to pair her off with the agent, but now that he's here, you know, so how do you do that as far as uh, really keeping your audience entwined with all of the twists and turns? Um, I never was a person who loves happy endings. I have to admit. In my the original story from Catherine, she died in the final episode. I have to admit, yes. <laughs> she left Darren and the children behind and uh, was gone. I, I don't intend to do this now. <laughs> oh, good, because we <laughs> it would be so hard because we we've, we've grown close to Catherine. I mean, your page is named after Catherine, so... <laughs> So that would be really, really hard. It was already hard when we thought that Darren had passed. And now, you know, and I, and I saw, like, everyone that, that commented, and they were just really, really hurt about it. Um, but then when he came back, you know, it brought joy joy back to, <laughs> to a lot of your audience. So that you lose Catherine would be very difficult, especially yeah, now. A lot of people going to kill me if I did this. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot do that. <laughs> Yeah, she's a very important part of of the whole. I mean, like I said, she is the page, so we need her there. So I do like what what you just said, though. You said you weren't really a fan of happy endings when yes. you were young. So does that kind of make it easier for you whenever you have to make certain um, decisions, like 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 with Darren, for example? Does that make it an easier um, decision in your writing to go ahead and 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 say, well, he died in the line of duty. Because I think that's like a hard part for us as writers, you know, doing storyline content on Instagram or in your own personal writing. That's the hardest part is to kill off a character. I have to admit, I never have, have had any problems killing a character. <laughs> really? Oh, no. my goodness. I have, <laughs> I have a story. I got to get like that, though, because I have a story that I've been sitting on, and I, I have it written, but the part where the character has to die, he's not even really a main character. It's just that he's young. I haven't wrote it, and and I've had it. I've been married for 13 and a half years. I think I wrote it about a year before I even met my husband, so it's been sitting there for about 14 years or so, and I just don't want to do it, <laughs> but, I, I, but, I, but I do agree that it especially from reading your page, it, it helps to move your story along and it keeps your audience engaged. It's part of that unexpected, but it is a hard thing to do. Yes. Sometimes it's very hard and you think, Oh, do I really have to do this? And uh, yes, <laughs> I always end up. Uh, yes. Think it's okay. And uh... I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a crime fan and uh, maybe I watch too much crimes, uh, CSI and so every, every kind of uh, crime scene stories. And uh, I'm very interested in uh, forensics and uh, maybe that's uh, part of the whole thing. Well, I, I agree with you being able to do, like I said, I'm learning right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning right now because that is 
one of my hardest parts is to take out a character, especially a character that's been a part of a, a storyline in an intricate way. It's really, really hard. And I know that that's something that, um, I think it's something that, that really does help push you as a writer is to be able to take out a, a character <laughs> if necessary. And so I, I hope that we're all listening to that because I'm pretty sure that there's a few of us <laughs> who have storylines that I've read and we, uh, we're kind of sitting on that idea of should I, should I really, you know, go the next level and take out the character, you know, just allow them to, to die or should I, you know, bring them back miraculously or, or whatever that case is. And you're saying just, just do it. Just go ahead and do it. So I like that. <laughs> I like that. Just go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and do it. <laughs> you always have the chance to undo it because uh, as long as it isn't published, it's uh, not fixed. So you can, every time you can rewrite the story. If you say, no, I can't live with this uh, kind of plot. I can rewrite it and make it happy or positive or anything like that. I like that. I like that. I do. So, You said you've been writing since your teenage years. Yes. What made you go into storyline with Instagram? Um, I've been to Instagram for a while. I have a second account and it's a, it's a more of a toy account and uh, with LOL dolls and other toys. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and it's, op it's just like opening another door. It's just so different. Uh, a toy Instagram toys is totally different than Instagram. It's like you're entering a different room. And um, mm -hmm. it was a little bit exhausting being in the toy section because it's always keeping up with the latest toys. It's uh, a little bit frustrating. You're claiming things and buy things and show them. And of course you get um, some collaborations, but it's a little bit exhausting over the time. So I have, 17,200 followers over there and uh, at the last few months I slowed down a little bit on that page and since I always enjoyed writing I thought this way it was a good way to yes try another way of writing <laughs> I always love to take pictures uh, my best friend and I used to take pictures with our dolls uh, Years ago, I painted backgrounds and uh, everything like similar to this. Uh, oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> and uh, over the years, first of all, we, we used to play with the, with the dolls. And over the years, we only made up the backgrounds and the, we put up the dolls for the pictures and took photographs. Uh, story went a little bit in the background, but we always had enjoyed taking pictures with our dolls. Uh, was a little bit expensive because back then we had really no digital pictures or real pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and most of them came out horrible. <laughs> Blurry, too dark, too bright. And uh, out of 36 pictures, maybe we could use 10 of them. So <laughs> That's back when we had to like actually go and get them developed. <laughs> yeah. Compared to now, yeah. <laughs> so every time you took a picture it was like a gamble you didn't know what you were going to get yeah. but yeah, yeah so it was uh, always exciting to see what's what you get <laughs> yes and it, yes camera, cameras back there weren't that good like they they're now and uh, the, the toys were very small we had a lot of uh, prince of power and masters of the universe toys and there are yes. a lot of Yeah, and they're a lot of smaller than uh, Barbie dolls. And uh, mm -hmm. most of the time, it was a tiny, uh, tiny figures on the picture <laughs> and the huge background. And you have to use the magnifier to see what's on the picture. <laughs> But oh we love to do it. We use different uh, materials to build scenes, to construct things. Or I used to paint them with watercolor and uh, yeah. We always love to do this. <laughs> wow. And see, and it's so interesting to me that the things that we did when we were younger, how it fits into our, our happiness and our joy right now. Yeah. And I so never, you don't want yet. This. <laughs> Isn't it so true? And you don't want to neglect those things because I used to do dioramas when I was younger. And I, of course, I played with my, my Barbies, I think, until I was about 14 or so. And then I just 
you know, house them with me. <laughs> wherever we would travel, wherever we moved, they go with me. Um, and I really didn't pull them back out again until with my, my daughters. And that was last year. But it's really interesting how the things that we did when we were younger really does create this blueprint for what we do right now. And we didn't, uh, like you said, we never even thought about it. Yes, that's true. Yeah, I, never, I never thought about Instagram or anything like that. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you're already doing it. <laughs> you're already doing it. So where do you get these intriguing storylines from? I know that you said that you watch a lot of, of the forensics and the CSIs. Yeah. So how does, how does that work into creating this, this world with Catherine? Uh, most of the stories are out of my mind. <laughs> They're from my mind. I uh, just uh, yeah, think about them and try to um, yeah, put them put them into reality. And uh, some things are maybe influenced by CSI and the, all those uh, series, but uh, most of the stuff I come up with. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something that I really like that you did. And I felt, I mean, I, I, I like your work, period. But I really, really like this. When Darren came back into Catherine's life, Catherine, was, it was hard for her to accept him being back. And, yeah. and then see her kind of like go through this roller coaster of emotion. Like on one hand, she's accepted it. Then, I'm, you know, she's glad that he's there. She loves him. They have this history together. There's a love of her life, but then she's also mad at him. And so you'll see her kind of give it a little bit. They kiss right here. They make love right here, but then I'm mad again. And I felt like that was so true because how would you respond to someone who you love, who, who you've confided in, you know, and, and you felt like you guys had, had this trusting relationship. And I, I just, I, I agreed with, with how you wrote it. I agreed so much with how you wrote because it was like, why couldn't you just tell me as my husband what was going on? And I really like how you just, you worked with that, with, with, with the play of the emotions. And it was so very real for me, especially being a female and having <laughs> all these different range of emotions that we do. I was like, that is so spot on. Like, I just want to compliment you on that. I felt like that was just so spot on on how you wrote that because we would have those range of emotions where I forgive you, but then I take it back and I love you interacting with our babies, but I'm, I'm still mad. And um, I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoy reading your, your page period, but that right there was just, like I said, emotionally so spot on. And you really do capture that with Catherine. You capture that with, with all the characters, but Catherine, that's why I said you can't take her out. You can't, she can't get sick during this pregnancy. She can't, she can't have anything bad happen because that's our girl. <laughs> yes, you do a great job with her. Now, I do notice that you are very active on your page, and I've got to get more active after, after I have my bambino, my baby here. I wanted to know, when do you photograph? Uh, mostly I always try to photograph, uh, around 5 PM. Okay. Uh, sometimes when I'm off work, I photograph in the morning. I always look at the different time zones, but it's always difficult to, uh, you know, Instagram. Sometimes yes. the pictures show up when Instagram thinks it's okay to show them up. And sometimes <laughs> they never show up. And sometimes you think, Hey, I already seen that one. And, uh, I like yes. it. and then it pops up again and nothing happened. Is it, eh? I already <laughs> saw this one. And where's my life? <laughs> it does do that. It does. So it's uh, sometimes very difficult to see the pictures in chronolo chronological order. And uh, I always click on the username to see what pictures uh, came in what uh, order. So sometimes, yes. so sometimes Instagram shows me the last one and three, three others are missing in between. And uh, that's why I always click on the user itself to see what's in between. So uh, I agree. Instagram is weird sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. I have seen that myself where a picture that I've already liked will come right back up with my heart yeah. on it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but yes, and that I do. I think that's the best advice is to go back to the page so you can see if, in yeah. fact, there was more to the story. But um, I do like the factor being that you do 
always give us a nice amount of, of information, a good storyline whenever you do post it, you know. Well, you at put, least I try you know, to post three times a day and uh, three, three panels. That's my goal for each for the day. Three panels. One is, is I'm my, most of the time if it's only one. I'm really busy uh, because a kindergarten teacher. I come back at three o'clock mm -hmm. in the afternoon, and uh, then I have to take my pictures. <laughs> then sometimes the lighting is horrible. I don't have special lightings, and uh, I have to use the natural light, and um, so most of the pictures. Uh, I take in the afternoon. Now okay. we have uh, some kind of spring break and uh, now I can take pictures in the morning. And uh, yeah, but today I only took one set in the morning and uh, before we started our little chat, uh, I had another set for the funeral thing. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I, well, from what I've learned, through these IG lives with other, uh, with you know, speaking to other members and, and also even with my own experience, natural light is the best light. <laughs> so whatever, you know, whenever you're using your natural light, it works. Yes. So sometimes it really does because your pictures look good. Um, sometimes a little dark and rainy and uh, I have to brighten them up a little bit, but it's okay. I tr try they, to use the best light I can get, but... Uh, uh, we have a huge wall on this side of the of the house, so sunlight is a little bit rare in here. <laughs> so, well, it looks good though. It really does. I like I like how you use your lights. You know, the lights in your house as well as your your natural light, because it really does work. Especially whenever you do like your outside scenes and your backyard scenes, it looks good. Okay. So I like it. I like it. I'm looking forward, now this has to do with your characters, but I am looking forward to see uh, who this, who these neighbors are. Because I thought about the backyard scene and little Emily climbing over the fence, which I liked how you did that. <laughs> but I'm still there. Oh, I'm, I'm, you don't have to disclose anything during this IG Live. I'm just saying I'm looking forward to finding out more about the neighbors. Because I don't know if they're like spies or, or if they're just genuine. That's how you set up. <laughs> The storyline where, where we as the audience were constantly like, can can this person be trusted? Is that really a neighbor or is this someone who's? <laughs> I know I got, got a lot of comments. Oh, yeah, are they good? Are they bad? Or <laughs> can we trust them? Like, mm? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we all we have to just hang on and see, but. I really do like how you have done this. So for anyone who's watching and you have a desire to make your page more of like a crime thriller mystery, which is what you do have, I would say, and you have no clue how to do it, but you're just interested, definitely check out Catherine CPI page because you are so great. And it is not about copying, but just getting a good idea of like how you do these plots and these twists and you just really leave us on edge. <laughs> You really, really do. You leave us on edge. I do have a question as far as what would you say are the pros and cons of storyline um, content creation? Uh, classic pro is you can use your imagination and uh, do whatever you want. So yes. there are no limits. If you want to post a mermaid picture, you can do this. If you want to post, uh, yeah, a sports picture, you can do this. It's, it's you can go everywhere you want to, uh, as long as Instagram allows it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's so true. What would you say is a con? Um. You have to think more like a chess player because you are always have to be one step ahead of your actual post and you have to think in a lot of different ways, especially if it's a crime story. You have to uh, do a lot of research because uh, I don't like it if it's not, uh, yeah, it has to be a little bit uh, accurate. It has to be, uh, yeah, based on facts. Uh, if it's a fantasy story, you can do whatever you want to. But if it is a more, 
yeah, real life based story is you have to do a lot of research and uh, I don't like it to be uh, very unauthentically. That's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of work to do if you write a storyline. If you keep it, it consistent and if you want your audience to enjoy, you have to, uh, in Germany, we call it ein roter Faden, a red line uh, to follow. And uh, yes, that's a little bit difficult. I agree. I agree. Um, and I, I like that you said that, though. When it comes to storyline writing, it's important for us to research. <laughs> And it's so very important for us to research. And, and you did say, and even honestly, when I think about it, depending on where you're at with your fantasies, if you're, um, if you just have like a complete fantasy that you're creating out of nowhere, and then that's fine. But if you start putting in Roman gods and anything of that nature, then like yeah. you said, you're going to want to, you're going to want to research. And uh, that, that is, I mean, because even with my children, we were watching something today and it was set in a certain time zone i think it was like uh i'm not gonna say certain time zone but a certain era it was like 1920s and the vehicle that they had on there my children automatically were like that's not a truck they would have had back then <laughs> they're young <laughs> so it is it's so important to make sure that that whatever you're writing is is close to being actual um to either the time period that you're doing or the genre that you're doing because we're paying attention. So I do, I agree. Research is so very important. And we definitely do get that with Catherine <laughs> on your page. We definitely do get, um, get, get that feel of the authenticity that's there. Now, have you ever not have like, have you ever known someone that was a police officer? My to... father-in-law. <laughs> wow. Yes. Okay. That, I was just wondering, the inner, you know, like to draw you to that. Oh, cool. Yes, uh, my father-in-law was uh, a police officer. <laughs> wow. And yes. Does he know that, that you wrote this? Uh, no, he's very picky at uh, such things. We have a lot of com comedies, uh, comedy series here in Germany. Uh, and he's always, oh my gosh, how can they do this? <laughs> But I like that. I like how uh, how much that you did keep this realism as far as being a police officer is a very, very, you know, scary um, occupation. Uh, it has a lot of different perks to it. Yes. But in the same hand, you know, as far as as you are a superhero in your community, uh, to me, you are personally uh, because you do have to go through a whole lot. And that was one of the things that I, I believe that you brought to the surface with Darren's character when when you said that, you know, that he had died in the line of duty, which of course we're very glad that he didn't, but it does bring to, um, you know, like to our awareness, how serious that being a police officer is. Well, and it's more than just sorry wearing a badge. At the moment. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Darren is really going through a lot. He, yes. <laughs> he is, he is like, I really, <laughs> I've been having like such a, and I, I have a special feeling towards your character, Darren, because my husband's name is Darren. <laughs> so, so I always feel for him <laughs> as far as his position in your story. And then like with my own husband too, but he is, um, you know, I like, I like how much of a sensitive character that he is and yet how protective that he is. Uh, that is, I, like I said, I, I love how well-rounded you've made your characters because there's a lot of different layers to them. And one of the aspects, now that we're talking about that, one of the aspects that I do want to comment on is that you have brought out that, and you've brought out different aspects of their personality given the circumstances. And I think that is so key to storyline creation because, um, with Darren, we've always seen him kind of, you know, we, we knew that he was a police officer. We know that he has to, um, you know, fight crime and so forth. But with everything that's, that's taken place, we've seen even more of this protective, well, what, what I want to say, like, like a protective vibe that he has um, when it comes to protecting Catherine and the children. And we saw that when he got into a confrontation with Agent Warwick. So you just, <laughs> 
And even when he told her, no, you're not going to go to the funeral, you saw a different part of him that was like, oh, wow, we didn't know that Darren was like that. But, but it was because of the situation. So I like that you don't have this one-dimensional character. None of your com characters are one-dimensional. And I always try to think of the different emotion a person a person goes through, and uh, nobody's uh, happy all the time, and nobody's sad at the t all the time. And I always try to think, oh, how would I feel in this situation? Um, what would I do if I was in this situation? Would I be mad? Would I be angry? And uh, yes, um, I, I always try to feel like the character feels. Yes, I like that. And I like uh, that. Of course, it's difficult to feel like a man. <laughs> 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 Now, um, yes, <laughs> it's easier to to uh, write for a headstrong Catherine <laughs> because she's more like me. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Because it's difficult to write like a man, I have to admit. Uh, I try to do my best, but uh, I, I really struggle sometimes when I'm like, hey, is this really a man thing or, or not? <laughs> so I believe that you do a good job with it, though. Oh, and of course, I'm coming from me being a woman, too. But, <laughs> but <laughs> judging by my own like interactions like with my husband and so forth, um, I'll give you an example. When you have Darren and... Catherine just came out of the shower and Darren walks in and he's asking her about the bucket and her towel drops. And, and so you kind of like see him, you know, you know, she says, you know, I know that he was restraining himself. In fact, you had that titled self-control. So it was really difficult for him, but you know, he was, you know, he's such a gentleman that he gave her the towel and then he left out. And I felt like that was uh, a good, a good marker for his personal personality and that it, it showed him, as as a man being able to respect her as his wife so for me like i said when it comes to how, how you deal with agent warwick and how you deal with darren and with the other characters i'm i personally haven't there hasn't been a time where i said oh that seems like something that a woman would say you know what i mean like like each yeah. one of them have represented who they are as individuals so i, I believe that you've done a very good job with that so I I personally feel like <laughs> your characters have their own strong voice and they're each representing who they are as individuals. And you do a very good job with that. And, and the advice that you gave was to try to feel how each character would feel in that situation. Yeah. So I believe that's a really good nugget for us is to put our, to imagine ourselves. Because sometimes it can be kind of hard for you to say, well, How does Gloria feel in, in this situation? But if I can put myself in Gloria's position, I can write how she would feel emotionally better. So I, I do. I like that advice. And since we're talking about advice, what would be your advice for people who have who are watching and they have one or two dolls that, you know, um, that they have as characters in their storyline? How, what would be your advice as far as like how they could write on them? Like, well, I think uh, they should start with a one story picture. Only uh, a story with the two dolls and uh, only one panel, maybe four or five pictures, only small, uh, small storyline to get how it feels to write a story and nothing uh, too complex for the first time. Only a small panel, a small story, uh, nothing, uh, maybe, uh, nothing important at all. Just uh, maybe two dolls walking out in the garden and enjoy a rainbow. That's hmm. a, a short story that can you can that you can try your your skills, your photograph skills, your your writing skills. And uh, I wouldn't start with something very complex at the beginning. It's too too difficult. I agree. I agree. And I believe that if you do start off too complex, that that, that may be the very thing that can kind of frustrating, stop you from writing. Yes. You'll, you'll end up getting jumbled up and just kind of, for you know, putting it down and deciding not to do it. And this is supposed to be 
our therapy, our hobby, something that we enjoy. So, <laughs> so you don't want to let go of this because this is your enjoyment time. So I do. I agree with you. Something simple. And I yes. like, I like what you said. Like, simple. Very simple. Very simple. So now, if they have... I'm sorry. Keep oh. <laughs> you have to figure out if it's really what you like to do. But some people think, oh, I'm writing a story and then, oh, no, that's uh, not what I really want to do. They have to try and uh, they no, then, then they can see if it's really what they want. So a lot of people, uh, my, my best friend, for example, she wants to try to um, write stories too, but it's not her thing. She tried and uh, no, it's the same goes for my teenage daughter. She always trying to write stories and uh, it ends after two pages because uh, she sets her stakes too high. She always uh, tries to um, be like somebody else. Uh, she's always trying to reach uh, goals that are far away. And I always say, take it easy, small steps. Try your own style. Don't try to copy somebody else. Try to find your own, uh, your own ways of writing or drawing or something like that. You don't have to copy people who are perfect in writing or drawing or something like that. So she's always a little bit frustrated because she's always trying to be somebody else. So you first have to find out for yourself what you really want to do. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of very talented people out there. And uh, I would never ever try to uh, do something like somebody else does. It's, yeah. it's, it's impossible. I really love Dolls Bus, uh, X-Files, Dioramas, and I, I'm, I, I love crafting myself, but I would never ever try to copy her or anything like that. I, um, no, I enjoy her pictures very, very much. And I really <laughs> love them. And the details are amazing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, for me, it would be impossible to do anything like that. Same here. Same here. And I fully agree with you. That was such good information. <laughs> I was just writing it. That was what I was over here doing, just writing, <laughs> writing what you're saying. And I will be posting some of these notes. Uh, and then usually I always do a review over what, what um, past IG lives that we have. Yes, she said, Dow, Dow's Buzz said thank you. Yes, yes, I fully agree with you. Dow's Buzz, she, that's, that's her gift. That's her talent. You know, I would be, uh, I don't even think I would be able to craft <laughs> one of the tiny ties that she does without getting frustrated in the midst of that, because that's just, that's not really my thing. It doesn't mean I won't try, but that's what she does. Uh, and she, and like you said, she does it marvelously. Yeah. You know, she had the one with the pencils in the wall because Mulder always throws the pencils oh, to the ceiling. I'm sorry. You had the pencils in the ceiling. And <laughs> it's just those those details that she puts in, and that's what she does. And like you said, we can look at it and we can admire it and, and you know, definitely let her know that, that that's great. But don't take away from what you have by trying to copy what someone else has. In the end, you have to come up with your own style, and that's what makes you authentic. And uh, don't copy anybody else's uh people would know if if it's your work or is it, if it's somebody else's work. Yes, that's true. That's very, very true. One of the key things that was like pounded into my head um, throughout high school, and especially throughout college, was about, you know, do not plagiarize. And that was always my fear was to write something that, I, you know, if I was doing a research paper and if I forgot to put my quotes, like that would freak me out because I didn't want to be in a position of plagiarism because, you know, when you're in college, you get kicked out <laughs> for plagiarism. So it's really, really big. And that's what I've been talking to my children about because they're writing research papers. Like cite all your sources in your bibliography yep. so you don't get in trouble for that. And always make sure to, uh, you know, study up on this person or study up on, on this um, site, whatever, whatever it is that, that you're that you're researching, study up on it thoroughly enough so that you can be able to talk about it but if you're going to quote someone make sure that you you know you put your quotations there and then you give credit and i feel the same way when it comes to storyline content creation that we should be able to bond with our characters enough to where we can create 
their storyline in a, just like you said, the keyword in an authentic way without having to look at someone else's page. Like I don't have to look at Catherine and say, you know, <clears throat> I like what you wrote. Now I'm going to take a part of Catherine's personality and put it right here. No, <clears throat> Catherine is herself. And I, and I admire her for being who she is and her qualities. And Gloria is who she is in her storyline. And she has her own personality and her own trials and things that she's going through. And so I think that it's important for us to, I, I just, I agree with you so much. It's so important for us to be authentic in our story writing. Don't be afraid to be yourself with it. Yes, that's very even if it, Yeah, even if it doesn't look like someone else's, it doesn't take value away from what you have. So in some way, uh, the, our experience influence our story. And uh, if you copy somebody else, uh, your lack of this experience, the other person has used with his yes. character. Uh, yes. you, never, you never can feel the same like the person you are copying because it's a different life, different experiences. And uh, yes. that makes the difference. That's so very, very true. And our experiences is really what makes us who we are. I, when I think of different, and, and what we're doing right now, it's a visual art. You know, we're writing our storylines, but it still counts as visual art. And when I think of different artists who I've admired, I admire them because they put their, their, their experiences into their artwork, be it with abstract art, or if you have someone like, like who I love, Frida Caillou, and <laughs> whoever it is, even with Bob Ross, He puts his experiences into his paintings. We watched him today. He puts that in there. He puts the mountains and stuff because that was where, when he was in the military, he traveled to these locations and he mm -hmm. saw it and, and then he, you know, recreated it on, on tapestry, well, on, on the canvas. So I agree with you so much. Don't neglect the experiences that you have to try to take on what someone else has written. Like, I, I love the advice that you've given. And I think it's great that you share that with your daughter. And I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure she hears you. <laughs> I know, I know. I did teaching prior to homeschooling with my kids. And I tell you, it is so much easier to teach other people's kids than our own because you're constantly, just like you just said right here, you're constantly concerned. Are they actually hearing and receiving? Because <laughs> the way that they act sometimes... <laughs> We don't know if you're actually like catching hold of what we're what we're trying to teach you guys. And but I believe that what you gave to her is great advice. And when it's time, it is going to show. You know, right now, you know, I, <laughs> we just keep keep putting those hands together, keep praying. Because <laughs> yes, our children they can be uh, they can be a handful. They can because they have their own they have their own personality. They have their own yeah. personality. So. I know you do have to account for that, but um, I believe that, like I said, what you gave her was great advice as far as her being herself, being authentic and true to her storyline, yeah. and not trying to be like everyone else. You know, now nowadays things are different compared to when you and I were growing up because we do have social media, so she would see other people doing their storylines and doing their storytelling, and and it can kind of uh, um, be intimidating to where you're like, well, is mine even good enough? But really understanding that you know just allow yourself to grow in it don't compare it yes uh, it's, but for teenagers it's difficult they always try yeah. to uh, be like somebody else because they have to find them themselves at the moment and uh, oh there's just look at that i want to be like no you're <laughs> <Yeah, That's> teenagers <laughs> are <special> species <laughs> It's so very, very true. And you said it. You really, really did trying to find themselves. And so I, I would, I like what you said when we go back to this about having the one or two characters and allowing yourself to have that simple storyline because you're able to really find yourself in that writing. If you make it too complex, it's going to be it's harder to find. Yes. Now, Can what would really be frustrating if it doesn't work out like you planned you set up a whole thing and then in, in the end uh, nothing worked like you imagined then well, it's frustrating because well why did i do did i do this and uh, oh, so it's easier to small steps and develop your skills over the time and uh, always add a little 
more to the scene and uh, add a little more to, yeah, simply develop a little bit more from post to post. When I remember my first post on my other channel, it was, uh, yes, it was a, it was a, it was two dolls and uh, only two dolls, the pictures of two dolls, uh, the one that started it all. <laughs> and uh, my skills developed over the time. I, I really can see this, yeah, progress I made over the, yes, last three years. <laughs> On Dawson, oh, wow. I've been for a year, and uh, the other one is back in uh, 2018, I guess it was, 2018. Okay. Okay, now my question with, now with Catherine, as you said, your other pages was, was 2018, and oh yes, and happy belated anniversary again, just in case <laughs> anyone who's joined didn't know, but you just had your one-year anniversary with Catherine's VR. And so I do want to say, I, I told you happy anniversary then, but I do want to say out loud on here so everyone else can know that you have celebrated your one year anniversary and you were like at 1500. Who knows where you're at right now? Uh, <laughs> so we're going to be hitting, uh, we're gonna be hitting two be like anytime soon. <laughs> but not, because every, not everybody likes to read uh, Instagram stories. Some people are just here for the pictures and uh, they find it kind of boring to read that long text uh, and some people just enjoy watching uh, looking back pictures so this that's very very true which well for storyline content writing in my opinion to have to have 1500 or you know and, and beyond that is really really good because you said it right there not everyone wants to read it yeah some people just want to you know they want to see the picture and go to the next post and go to the next post so it's really important to um to celebrate that because not everyone has that <laughs> not everyone has that so i definitely i believe that that's something to celebrate now with with your page i of course we have Catherine's whole family that's the main core but then you have like agent warwick and then you have Catherine's um sister-in-law and brother who i've seen and then you also have of course the grandparents and now the neighbors how has that been as far as having multiple characters how how have you been able to do that? I um, have a background for every character. There's a background for her brother and her <clears throat> her sister-in-law and a small background for her father. And uh, there's always a small background for every every doll that's involved. Okay. That's why I... Uh, collect <laughs> i have a lot of of dolls around here who are all to appear in the story uh over the time <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> many more dolls lying around <laughs> the next one i'm going to introduce is agent kent who is going to replace agent warwick <laughs> yes which i i just read that and I was wondering, and someone else had already wrote that. They were like, oh, no, this sounds bad. <laughs> it right. It sounds bad. <laughs> but it was my I thought, Sally, because she's going to the funeral. We got this McMillan that's on the run. And then, you know, when you watch any of the crime movies, there's always a mole. There's always someone who works in the police department <laughs> or the FBI, and then they work – you know, and then they're like smuggling out information. They're like leaking the information to the mob. So we're like, oh no, <laughs> please don't let it be Agent Kent. At first, I thought Agent Warwick was like that. But then, you know, over time, even when he moved into the country house, I'm going to be very honest, I was still suspicious. I was suspicious. <laughs> 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 but then when he, you know, told them about Darren, that's what made me kind of get more you know, I relaxed <laughs> with him. I was like, okay. This is a good guy. He's really just trying to do his job. But then he had a crush on, on Catherine. And and I just, I believe that he saw her being vulnerable, you know. And she, and she was in a really bad position. And she's a pretty, you know, pretty doll. And so he was just, he was wanting to see if he could shoot his chance. <laughs> but I, I did. I was like, okay, okay, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with him. But then my only question about him was uh, when he said that, you know, like in this recent post that Agent Kent was going to be taking over. And I was like, why? But then he said, because he gotten too close to the case. So I was like, why, why did he even tell anybody? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> what did he have to tell them where they would even need to switch? Because I felt like he was going to be more protective over her in a way that Darren would because he does have feelings for her. So once again, you have left us with a cliffhanger because we don't know <laughs> who Agent Kit is. We don't know if he's going to be as protective. But yes, I, like I said, you do a great job at it. You do. You do a great job of keeping us on our toes and... Uh, like we have so many different questions <laughs> about the neighbors and now Agent Kent. We were just starting to get comfortable with Agent Warren, but uh, I like how you well, what you said. You said that you develop a background for each one of your characters. Yes, sir. and then that way, whenever you do put them in there, and, you know, and you photograph them, you put them into the storyline. It's it's not as it's not as um it's not frustrating. Random. they are uh, they have their own background and i guess it's important because uh, you have to know how to use your characters if you put them in in the storyline randomly they won't be authentic so every every uh, character has its own sometimes small background sometimes with bigger background but every character has to have a background because you are going to use them and if you want to make them authentically uh, you have to know a little bit about them i agree you have to know your dolls your actors uh, <clears throat> to uh, have conversations or something like that is and uh, if you don't have a background for them, it always remains on the surface. You can't have mm -hmm. deeper relationships if you don't know how the character ticks in certain situations. Yeah. So, so it is always important to have a background for every, every character you're using. So remember the coffee shop girl? <laughs> Uh, she she had a small background. She was in love with Darren, and uh, yeah, you always have to know who you are using. <laughs> so no matter how small that role is, yes, making sure that you have a background for them because it it really does come out. It really does in your writing. It does come out if if you have. A relationship built with your doll or if you don't if you just kind of threw them in there as a filler then it can be felt because like you said and you said it's so key you really won't have a dialogue with them it'll yes. be very surface but if you already have um, more of an understanding of who your doll is and what they're what they always say with acting what's your motivation you know you understand the motivation of the doll you know if they have children if they don't then you're able, you know, and, and whatever else is part of their personality, then whenever your other dolls are interacting with them, you'll be able to, as we said in previous IG Lives, hear their voices. You'll be able to hear, hear the dialogue and really write that out. And it'll be engaging. And that's one of the things that everyone who's making a comment down here is talking about how engaging your storyline is because of the factor being that it's proof that, that you have a background for your characters. And there's nothing that's random in it. So I, 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 I take that advice. And anyone else who's um, listening to this, definitely take that advice as far as understanding that it is important, no matter how small the character is, to build that background with them. Now, when you write, do you write, um, do you write a script ahead of time? Or do you type yours kind of like as you're, while no. you're on the, the Instagram. <laughs> That's funny. I, I got this question asked yesterday from, <laughs> from another year. <laughs> no. Um, the main story is, uh, yes, it's, it's finished. And it's, um, I always write three or two days ahead. I know okay. where I want to go. And uh, depending on time, I don't have always as much time on my hands as I, would love to have and uh, I always write down the stories for yeah the next two or three days I know okay. the, the whole story itself is in my head already I know where I want to go I know what I want to want to do where my characters are going uh, what's going to happen to them again <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, I know that, well, for us, <laughs> you always allow it to be a surprise for us. Just like this whole, um, well, well, you already got it on the post, so I'm, it's not like I'm bust down any secrets. But Catherine being pregnant, that caught us off guard. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought she was nauseous because of all the stress going on. I had no clue that she was pregnant. I was like, oh, wow. Well, we definitely don't want anything happening to her at this funeral. <laughs> I know she's got a double, a doppelganger, but I'm like, you know, <laughs> we got to keep her safe, more importantly. But yeah, the, I love how, how you're able to, even though you may write two, three days ahead, you're still able to keep us, you know, not, not really in the loop of knowing what's going to happen ahead. You do a real good job of holding it back. So I, I do enjoy how you do that. But yes, you said that you do script ahead of time, two or three days ahead, and then that kind of allows you to put the storyline out with with some organization going on of how of how you're gonna tell it. Sometimes uh, some Dostogram events pop in between uh, birthdays or something like that. I always try to involve this into my stories. Uh, I, I except last last time Poppy was on the Wednesdays Pink Dolls it was a uh, yeah out of storyline. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen that. I've seen that, but it doesn't it doesn't really affect your storyline in a bad way though. And most of the time, I was, uh, like I was saying, I try to in, to use uh, the theme of the of the event in, to integrate it into my story. Sometimes it's easier, sometimes not, and uh, therefore I skip a lot of events because they don't fit into my storyline, and uh, therefore I don't do them. That's another I'm thing sure. because it's unauthentically. If I join the Lola doll party at the seaside, if I'm in the countryside, so how am I gonna to uh, explain uh, they're at the countryside at the moment, uh, and how are they supposed to be at the seaside? <laughs> So it's uh, therefore I skip a lot of events. I really would like to take part in, but uh, it doesn't uh, always fit in. I, and I, I have that happen to me at times too. Um, and then I think that other storyline content creators probably <laughs> understand the same situation as far as if you do have your, your characters in a certain uh, location or, or even like a certain event going on in their life. Like if they're going through a traumatic event and someone's in a hospital, it's going to be kind of hard to take those characters and have them go to a party and someone's in the hospital, you know, and, and that character's in the hospital, but then you got to have them be at the party and then put them right back in the hospital bed. Yeah. And it can be rather confusing. So you do want to stay and, and that that's one of our challenges as storyline content creators is to stay true to our storyline as much as we can. Now, if you have a way of fitting it into your storyline, that's fine. Or if you just don't, you know, it's not a real big thing for you to jump outside of your storyline, then you have to personally, you know, decide that yourself because each person has their own thing. For me, I'm, I'm with you as far as trying to integrate the events into my actual storyline so that they fit. And then it allows my storyline to keep moving forward. But I think that's just something that each person has to decide on how, how they do their, their page. But yeah. um, I do like that. And before I do anything else, we've gotten a lot of comments and I don't want to ignore anyone. <laughs> so, oh yes. Yes. There was a lot of people that were like, Oh, I'm ready for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> so I don't want to ignore anything that anyone has written. And they did write a lot. There are a lot of people who have joined. Uh, we have hello to both of you. And if you have any questions, you, you are more than welcome to write that hello. I love the whole story and theme of Catherine CPI is what Dolls Buzz said. Uh, I am the character's motivations is what It's a Mad World NYC said. Somebody's very excited. Dolls Viewpoint about catching the live. And I noticed that there were... I think someone had a question a little earlier, and that's why I don't, I don't want to bypass that. I thank you for being here with me. 
You are so great, Sacred Pair, at what you are doing and how you interview. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Someone was saying they enjoy your page. <laughs> Someone said, poor Darren. <laughs> so so poor Darren. <laughs> Me too. I think, I think you make them complex, and you do make your characters complex. You do a very good job. Yeah. Uh, Edna Thompson as my aunt. Hello. She said, yes, you must be yourself. And she was referring to the writing. Because everyone is good. And it's okay. Dolls Buzz, when we had brought up about her, her page, she was saying, because everyone is good at it, at especially a, a thing. And this is so visible at Dollstagram that everyone is good at their own personal thing. And this is especially visible at Dollstagram. And then when we had spoke about, um, having writings that, that you're trying to copy from someone else. It's a mad world. NYC said eventually it comes out. If it's not yours, you cannot sustain it. And that's very, very true. If you try to write what someone else has over time, um, <laughs> it's going to end up falling apart because you won't be able to keep, keep that, that character going. Cause you, just like you said earlier, you won't have the experiences that goes yeah. with it. You won't have the background. It's not yours. You can't keep um, him consistent. It's, it's difficult because you don't know anything about him. Exactly. Uh, Barbie Size Life of Vinya. I think that's Vin Vinla. Said, it's so nice to see your faces. <laughs> Daily Adventures of Ash Harbor says, love to see the face behind the amazing account. <laughs> yes. <I'm right> <laughs> <laughs> yes. Moon Pie Dumplings uh, said, makes sense to have a backstory for the doll. Yes. And some people said, I agree so much. And that was Barbie Sides Life of Vinla. And uh, My Little Curvy World, hello, says, makes lots of sense. And I fully agree. Uh, thank you for this very good discussion. Having a conversation in your head, true. <laughs> as far as with the dolls having the conversation, and someone else was commenting again about Darren. I tell you, we all we all have a heart for Darren. <laughs> I love to hear other storytellers their way to tell a story, tell their way of a story. Yes, and um, if you have any more questions or comments, you can definitely post it on here. But this is not, and I'm, I'm letting you guys know we are not going to be doing any. Um, uh, you know, we're not going to be giving out any any updates. Uh, I'm not, not going to ask her <laughs> about what the future holds for, for Catherine or Darren. So that will not be discussed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. We wrote a lot because it's a good discussion. Okay. So someone else is taking notes. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> I always, always, always have my paper with me to take notes because life is all about learning. Um, we were having a conversation last week because uh, we had the memorial for my niece's brother. And when we were talking, we were having a conversation about being a, uh, how does my husband put it? Uh, oh, goodness. A master of none. He always says, uh, it's, a, it's a saying. I can't even think of it. So, I, I, I wish, and well, he is on here, but I just can't think of it. it just having like a jack of all trades and master of none. And so we were talking about that as far as being able to do so many different talents and gifts and, um, you know, not being a master of it. But the reality of it is, is that as long as we're breathing, we're not really mastering anything. We're constantly learning every day. Every day we're a student. <laughs> and so that's why I write notes. I've been uh, writing for many years myself and I have my own background with writing, but that doesn't mean that the way that I write is correct or, and it doesn't make it wrong. It doesn't make what anyone else does right or wrong. Cause it's your, just like you said, you're using your own imagination and you're taking experiences and whatever else it is to, to write what you're, you're doing and whatever your craft or talent is, it's not about trying to master it. It's about learning, learning from what you're writing, learning from other people, Everyone who's been on here and who I view on, on Dowstagram, for me, I'm like, you're an expert at what you're doing. And I love what you guys do. And I love being able to have these IG lives where we're able to discuss your process in doing it. So for me, I, I'm always like eager to learn more about how, how you do it and what made you choose this. <laughs> because it's something that uh, continues to 
motivate me and inspire me as a as a writer and as a doll photographer and as well as so many other people who have commented so we love Catherine. <laughs> we love Catherine. We love, we love you. We love Darren. <laughs> and um, someone said, Barbie size life of Vinla said, as long as you try, you can achieve some marvelous things. That's true. Very, very true. As long as you try, you can achieve some marvelous things. But I, I actually, I'm actually out of questions. I'm just thankful that you joined me today. Um, Afternoon for me and evening for you. <laughs> yes. well, it's uh, eight o'clock in the evening at the, and here in Munich. It's uh, eight o'clock. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, well, we must be. We're, I think we're at two o'clock. I, I my my clock is turned around the other way, but yeah, yeah, I think we're at two o'clock. Yeah, Darren. Yeah, we do. We love Darren. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I still feel sorry for him. He, I, I think he's more of the bad guy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think everything he does, he he's he's wrong. <laughs> he can't yeah. make anything right. But it's like I understand. I I think I think a lot of us understand why he did it, though. It was almost who else? Uh, in there, you know, to keep their family protected. You know, who else would do something uh, outside of that? You know, he he almost had. Now it would have been nice. Uh, like I said, as a wife, it would have been nice for him to probably have let her know this is what's going on. But in the same hand, well, from what I'm understanding, he was kind of like, you know, I, if I tell her, that may be putting her into more danger. So I, I, I don't really feel like he's a bad guy. I, <laughs> now, exactly, Team Darren. Somebody said, oh, Barbie Superstar Forever said Team Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Dolls Buns said Goody is alive. Yeah, we were happy when he came back. Now I was surprised though, because I really, you know, I had just kind of settled as a, you know, as a reader. I was like, okay, he's 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 gone. And I I had thought the way that you were writing it, I thought she was about to get with Agent Warwick. But I was like, no. But I was still hesitant because Catherine was so devoted to Darren that I was like, maybe they'll get together and, together and then she's going to be like, no, this isn't right. And then, you know, it's just going to be her as a single parent. But then you did that twist and turn on us. <laughs> a little Jace. And that's one of the other things I do want to bring up before we, we close out. I really like how... And someone said, I thought Darren really died too. Me too. I really like how you use your your children, Jace and Rebecca. Because they're not just little filler pieces. They their personality, yes, yes, their personality and who they are is 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 just as much essential to the flow of your storyline as much as Catherine and Darren. And so I like how you do that. What made you decide to give them such a strong role? Because I think for a lot of us with our kids, we can uh, kind of like have them in there, just kind of like, oh, they're so cute, and then then they're out of the scene. No, but with Jace yours, had his role from the beginning because par Darren was a single parent and Chase was always with him. So Chase was involved into the story from the beginning. Wow. And uh, he always was part of the story. And uh, therefore, he's always with us. And now his little sister, uh, she's a little bit tiny. <laughs> she is. She is so cute, too. Now, did you, now, now did you craft her? Or no, no. I've never seen her. I've never seen her mold before. Uh, she's from eBay. She, I, I bought her on eBay. Yes. Um, wow. I always forget about the seller's name. <laughs> I'm oh, funny. I can re I can remember faces pretty well. If I see a face in the morning, I recognize the face in the evening again. But I'm horrible <laughs> at names. Give me a name in the morning, and I have no idea who you're talking about in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. I do, but I love because she does. She has her own her own look. She's a different mold. Uh, I really do enjoy how she looks. I enjoy both of them. But I, like I said, she has her own unique look and she's very cute. Now, what made you decide to give them such a strong role in your storyline, though? 
Uh, because it's always about adults. Most of the time, the stories are about adults. It's uh, except one little cozy cottage. There are a lot of children involved, and but m most of the accounts there are a lot of adult stories. And therefore, I like to involve some children. Uh, John Stolls, this uh, medieval page, the has a small baby doll as well. Um, but I think children are an essential part of our life and uh, they deserve to have their own story. <laughs> I like that. I like uh, that. I do. I, I believe that a lot of our storylines, mine included, are surrounded around the adults. Um, and I kind of throw mine in every once in a while, but I really do like how integrated, like I said, Jace and Rebecca are in your storyline. And even, you know, uh, with the recent you know, situation of Jace having this interaction with Emily. I think and then, for me it's a little bit easier to use children because I'm a kindergarten teacher. I know how children react, uh, how they do certain things. So for me, it probably is a little bit easier to put children into the story than somebody else who is, who's got nothing to do with children except his own or children at all. So it's difficult, maybe it's difficult for people to integrate children in their story because they don't know how they act, how they do things, how they, yeah. Yes. Children, yes. So uh, it's uh, easier for me because I have 25 children a day, <laughs> excluding my own. And uh, <laughs> therefore, it's maybe it's easier for me to know, to integrate them because I know how they work. <laughs> Well, I do. I like that. And I, and I, I receive that as a tidbit and anyone else who's listening, if you have children in your story and you've been wondering, like, should I put them in the, you know, should I make them more of a part of my storyline? Don't be afraid to, because the whole revelation of us finding out that Darren was even alive came from Jay saying that his dad was, was still there. And then that's what made agent work say, okay, here goes the truth. So, I, I, I believe if you didn't have that, that light shined on Jace so much, that revelation wouldn't have came out. So, you know, I mean, it would have came out a different way, but it still gave such an importance to Jace and who he is as a character. So I, I received that. And anyone else who's listening, don't be afraid to use those children characters <laughs> because it can be very beneficial to your storyline. It yes. really, really can be. I think any uh, character can be beneficial to a storyline. Even Francine or Rufus, uh, they're a little bit out of the story at the moment. <laughs> 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 the dogs are missing in action. And <laughs> <laughs> that is true, though. But they can. They can. Uh, they, can they will be back soon. <laughs> what? Once we get everything together with the McMillan case <laughs> and then get everyone resettled again. Because <laughs> yeah. right now, if I'm running wild, uh, I think that that's, that's definitely <laughs> going to make it a little bit difficult. But yes, yes, you do have a point that any of your characters can be beneficial, just depending on how you want to use them. Yes. But don't be afraid to use those children either. So I like, I like how you did that. I like how you did that. Someone said, I love Catherine's story. That was Town of Woodhull Stories. And Barbie Superstar Forever said, I like you build a family. Oh, you, I'm sorry. You build a family storyline also with grandparents, aunts, and uncles. And yes, you have. Hello, Julie B. Barbies. And yes, you have. What's going to happen with Agent Warwick? That's what Town of Woodhull Stories said. I, I will not ask any questions that has to do with <laughs> and where the storyline is going to go we have to keep riding the roller coaster <laughs> oh. uh, he's yeah, we not going to be completely out of the story that's so uh, that's, uh, that's okay. all I can say he's not gone for good <laughs> okay okay well that, that's good that's good because we have built a relationship with him as your audience so <laughs> she got smiley faces <laughs> Yes, yes, we have. We built this uh, relationship with him. Uh, you know, he didn't do everything professionally, but he was still a very good agent. He made sure that they stayed safe. So 
Yeah, we, we don't want him to go completely. Especially if this Agent Kent isn't any good, then we want him to come back. <laughs> <laughs> we want him to come back. So we are definitely going to be staying posted for the funeral because that's where that, that that's where we're at right now. It's with the funeral, which I'm really glad to see that the funeral is going to be happening because I didn't know if you were going to do the funeral or not. And, and so, yeah. I, I, so really, I'm, I really wanted to do the funeral, but there happened so many things in between that I, oh, I had to put it back. And uh, so now I think now I have to do it because uh, nobody's going to be leaving. He's not uh, having a funeral. And uh, that's suspicious, too. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So, yes, I'm glad to see that he is going to have the funeral because, like I said, I didn't know if he was. And I was still willing to go along with it. I was like, hey, maybe they're not going to have it or maybe they're going to have it. And then she's not, you know, she's going to say that she's not able to attend because of the dangers that's out there. So we're just going to keep ourselves posted this weekend. <laughs> This weekend, <laughs> as you post uh, the different photos, or this weekend, or this week, uh, where you post your different photos, and I do want to bring up really quick about the photography, is that you stated that you do have a goal. So for those who are watching and you're wondering, like, how do I do this? Uh, if you want to go back and watch this again, definitely do. But she stated that she does set up a goal as far as how many posts a day that you're going to have and how many panels. And I think that that's something that we can all, you know, aspire to do as well, as far as keeping us on task when we're putting, putting out our posts is to be able to set ourselves a goal, even if it's not for, for each day, at least, you know, for the week. So we can make sure that we are being able to, to do what we enjoy. And that's really the whole point of what, what we do is we do it because we enjoy it. Now, do you want to um, have anyone also know about your other page? Uh, what do you want to know? <laughs> oh, no. I mean, like, do, do you want me to include that on there in case uh, anyone no, wants that, to that, go that, to that it's, page? It's, no, it's a toy-related page and uh, nothing special. And uh, I really don't put much effort in it at the moment. Uh, my main focus is here on the storyline. Uh and it's, as I said before, it's completely different. It's only a post about posting toys and pictures of toys. And uh, yeah, there's no uh, no background story. It's just nice pictures. It's completely different. So um, yeah, I'm not really into it at the moment, I have to admit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I completely understand, but I wanted to ask you that. But we're going to keep on following Catherine's page. Do you have anything that you want to add before we close out? Mm, I just think everybody should try. Yes. Even um, if you think you're not good enough, uh, just you have to keep on trying. Try if you like to do it. You can delete the, you can delete the picture anytime. If you think, well, no, it's not uh, what I want to do. You can delete your account. You can delete your pictures. Uh, and uh, nothing will, will happen. If you say, okay, I want to do it, give it a try. If you're not satisfied with it, delete it. That's true. Um, That's true. You have to try. As long as you don't try, you'll never know if it's is, if this is yours or not. So um, if you say, oh, no, it's not. Uh, I don't want to do I can't do this. Uh, and you don't do it. You'll never know if you really. <laughs> That's true. So it's just just like writing a story. If you don't write the first letter, you'll never know if you're able to do to write a story. So just try, try to find out if it is yours. If you like to do it, if you love to do it, if you can put your love into it, if you can, if you have the time, if you have, uh, yeah, if you like it. If not, you can put it away. Nothing will happen. Nobody will ever know. <laughs> That's true. But you have to try. If you don't try, you'll never know. That's true. That's so very true. You're, and I, yeah. I, oh, I, if I it. had, I, I, yeah. So try. That's all I can say. You have to try. If you don't like it, skip it. Put it away. Delete it. Start something else. But try. <laughs> try. Try. I, I like that. And then if you decide that you don't even want to use that same doll, if you enjoy the storyline creation part, you enjoy writing, 
But then you say, well, I, I don't really like having this doll as my main character. I think I'm going to use a different doll. Yes. Uh, of course, it's difficult to say, I don't like Catherine anymore. I put her away. I have to write her out of the story. <laughs> I can't stop using her or Darren or okay they can die <laughs> they always can die I can like shooting bam gone <laughs> this, at least it's quite easy <laughs> but <laughs> um yeah I I won't I won't replace her or Darren at any any time soon <laughs> don't worry what good <laughs> We told you how much we've already grown attached to them, but um, I do understand. I do. I, now, I know, like, for myself, I was almost at plastic surgery. <laughs> you can always see plastic surgery. Yeah. My mom said, wait on. Uh, but, yes, that is true. Actually, I, I can't think of whose account it is. I saw it last year, like, probably last summer, and they gave their doll a plastic surgery makeover. <laughs> so they, they had the one doll, and then they they – you know, they showed pictures of the surgery, and then when the doll came back, it was a completely different doll. Okay, but yeah, that's a good one. But uh, you have to give the story, the, the the doll, a chance to leave the story if you're not ready to. You don't like her to use her anymore. Uh, I always think it's a little bit strange if somebody is changing the story, and you you're reading this, and the next time it's completely different. Uh, I always say I'm a little bit confused. Uh, sometimes I, have, I, have, I follow, uh, follow accounts and they have a, a, a nice story going on and all of a sudden the story changes. So they say, hey, what's going on? And uh, yeah. they don't bring the actual story to an end. I think it's always important to bring it to an end for everybody who is following has a good feeling, okay, the story is over and it's not wondering, oh, gee, what is happening? What, what had happened to the doll? What had happened to the story? It's gone and, well, where is it so it's unsatisfying if you are left behind with an open uh, with an open background an open story or anything like that and uh, I think uh, if somebody is putting a lot of love and uh, things in this story in creating content then you owe it to the other to the people who follow you who like your story who come come <clears throat> to write your comments on your story. I think you own it to them to bring it to a nice end. Not just I agree. To, not just to stop and say, oh, that's over. Uh, that's all. Uh, next, uh, Let's go to the next story. As a, I think you own it to them. They like it. They, they love it. They hate it. <laughs> they suffer with the characters. <laughs> so That's true. You, you have to bring it to an end. Everybody no, nah, everybody is impossible, but you can live with. So, I agree. I think it's unsatisfying if the story is over and nobody knows what happened. So, even a small sentence of explanation, though I finished the story because, but maybe this could have happened, or so that's enough. You can write on Instagram too, it doesn't have to be a picture story or anything like that. So, it's just a small word so this is this happened uh, and uh, the story ended because uh, so everybody is fine can be fine with it but just leaving the story and uh, starting a, a new one is uh, well unsatisfying I, I always think it's very frustrating to you read and read and read and pff, gone <laughs> i agree i agree there's actually a a show and i don't want to call it out but it's called sulfur springs really enjoyed it it was something that was entertaining for us as adults. The kids enjoyed it, and it had it, it was um, they had like a portal, and they would go back in time, and and then it, you know whatever they did in back in time could possibly influence what was going on in the future. And so the, I'm not gonna go too deep into what the story is. It's Sulphur Springs, if you want to check it out. But the thing was that it ended on a cliffhanger, and so. <laughs> We're watching it, and we're like, really, you know, we've watched the whole season, and we've been really enjoying it. We try to find out what's going to go on, and we found out that it's possibly going to be canceled after oh. one season. So it ended on a cliffhanger, and to this day, we still talk about it. <laughs> we're still like, I wonder what's going to happen. You know, she bumped into her, um, I think it was like 
her her aunt or like a great aunt that she would have bumped into that that she saw and that's like the last episode so we're wondering how is that going to influence the the characters in the future and and does that you know have any effect on on her right now we'll never know <laughs> never know so i fully agree with you and then even with my own personal storyline my character nita uh she had a, a medical situation and i kind of had to sit back and go okay now am i going to keep this character or you know is this just going to be a medical situation and and then she recovers and i kind of realized that in moving forward with my gloria character that i hadn't really addressed nita so I took some pictures today that I that I'll be posting later on this weekend in order to address what's going on with Nita so that I can move that storyline along because you don't want to leave people just hanging out there because in our minds it does stay there we're like okay well yeah. what happened here <laughs> I've been following it this long what what's going to happen and and did they ever recover and did so I fully agree with you and it is something that we, whenever you're writing, you do have to be aware of. Go back, you know, especially if you have multiple characters. If you have multiple characters, go back in your storyline and just try to look and see, you know, did I take care of that? Did I address this? Uh, oh, this person was pregnant. Did I ever do anything about that? Are we going to do a baby shower? I know it's been a while, but, you know, addressing it so that it can, it won't be stuck in our minds as the reader. <laughs> in the audience because you said something so poignant we suffer with those characters so when those characters are going through something uh and we've been reading it and really staying on posts with the other posts we want to know what happened yeah so i, I do I, I think it's important and maybe it's um it's good for for your own to finish things and you have bring it to an end so you have don't have to think all the time. So oh, what what is about this character? Oh, I should have ended this one like that one and uh, this in that way. And uh, if the character is uh, out of the game, let's say that way, uh, I think you have to make sure he is out of the game in a good or bad way, whatever the character was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's important to. I mean. yeah. I, fully, I, I, I always fully hated agree. the to be continued line at the end of uh... <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> the same here. The same here. <laughs> the worst thing is that to be continued is, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to us actually this week. We were watching Star Trek. And um, <laughs> in the first episode, it was, you know, the it, it had the whole thing. And then all of a sudden it was, to be to you know, be continued, and so I kept trying to figure out the next day. I think it was like Wednesday. The kids were saying, "We gotta watch Star Trek. We gotta watch Star Trek," and it was because they're trying to catch that next episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that to be continued can really, it, you know, because you want to know right now. You want to know yeah. what's going to happen right now. It's so cool. if it's a, it's an old stories and you know this has so and so many. Um, parts of the series going on but if you're watching an actual uh, series live on tv or netflix or whatever uh, and you you don't know when it will continue you have to wait for the next and the next and uh, all of a sudden the movie company says no it's canceled so yeah thanks a lot <laughs> I know. julie b said something on it she said it's like a movie or series that just ends with no real ending our family just makes up the ending lol <laughs> Yeah, you almost do. You have to make up the <laughs> you have to make up the ending, especially for those of us that are into and really involved in storyline content. We have to make up the ending so it's not constantly ruminating in our mind. <laughs> Cause your mind will think about it. It'll just come up out of nowhere. You're like, I wonder <laughs> what did happen. So and that's the same thing that we write to be aware of that with our own characters. What what things are in our audience mind as far as them thinking about what happened in this situation and then addressing it, even if it's been some time, even if it was some time ago, addressing it. Don't just leave it hanging. So I do. I agree with that. Well, I have enjoyed our conversation and our yeah, time. Today. <laughs> I thank you. I thank you so much for. No, I have to thank you for having me. me. Yes. <laughs> 
And like everyone said, it is such a pleasure to be able to see your face and see the face behind Catherine CPI. Well, and most of the time, I'm I'm more a behind of the scene uh, person. I'm, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> It is. It is. It's good to come out too. <laughs> it's good to come out. Let us see your beautiful face and being able to hear all the wonderful knowledge that you gave to us about writing. And the most important being to try. Yes. Try. Try it out. If it's not something that you want to do, at least you know. At least it's not something that, that you're still thinking about. You at least have tried it and and you know. Or if you tried it, you say, this is something I do want to do. You try it and you keep going. So yes. I, I mean, as long as you I, don't try, you'll never know. <laughs> you'll never know. You'll never know. That's very, very true. So I thank you again. I will be, um, of course, putting down what we wrote or what what we what I wrote, what you said. <laughs> Because I wrote a whole lot. And um, as always, whenever I have my reviews, I'll be going back over it. But I always tell you guys, go back and listen to it because you said a whole lot of nuggets that was very encouraging for us as writers as far as how you're able to relate to your characters and building the background for them. So I really do hope that even if you're watching this live, that you go back and listen to it again because you said so many things, so many great things that's very encouraging to us as storyline content writers. So I want you to have a very good evening. Thank, Thank you. you again. And you have a really good, uh, what is this going to be, the spring break or summer break? Uh, it's called Thingston. It's, um, okay. yes, uh, uh, summer break. Oh, we have different summer, summer break in Bavaria is uh, starting end of July. And we have an Easter break. And now this is two weeks of Thingston. It's uh, uh, Jesus, no, it's uh, some Christian um, holiday. Oh wow! Okay. Well, not not it, all uh, not all countries uh, do have it in Germany. It's mostly <coughs> Christian and uh, not. Uh, and we have two weeks. Okay. I'm well, back work, I'm back at work next week because kindergarten is closed only for one week. Uh, schools are two weeks, and uh, yes. <laughs> I always did enjoy kindergartners. I did. I enjoyed them and and the younger ones. Um, and then I, when I worked in the school system, I worked with elementary age. So that went, you know, from pre-K to fifth graders. I didn't really, I worked very little bit with middle schoolers as far as like when I was substitute teaching. And I would not work with high schoolers. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Oh, goodness. But <laughs> it's nothing against the high schoolers. It's just that I'm of a shorter stature, and some of the high schoolers are taller than me. And I was like, I, I, don't, I didn't want them thinking by me being shorter that they could try to challenge me. So I was like, you know, <laughs> let me just stick with my elementary and my middle schoolers. But elementary, I just feel that you get so much so much love from them and their, their response to what they learn is just different. They don't fight against you the same, but I did. I enjoy the kindergartner. So I, I think it's a great thing that you're doing. I do. I do. And then when you share this information with us, I know that that's information that you share with them. So that's very encouraging to be able to know that they have someone like you as a teacher, who's telling them about the importance of trying and telling them about the importance of them being able to use their imagination. So I, I'm i glad to hear that what you share with us, you're sharing it with a little generation of, of people that's going to be able to uh, do some dynamic things based off of knowing that they can use their imagination to do those things. So, so good job. <laughs> Good job. So thank you. Thank you again. And you guys, thank you for joining. I hope we can do this again too. Uh, but I'm looking forward, like I said, I'm going to be on my page on and off or on my Instagram on and off in order to check out your, your new post this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so we can find out what's going to be happening at this funeral. So stay 
stay, everyone stay, you know, um, um, on your pages, on your Instagram, and check out Seth, uh, Catherine CPI. I got excited there. <laughs> So that we can all stay updated. Like I said, this was not to find out what's going to happen in the future. We have to journey with Catherine uh, <laughs> so we can know what's going to happen and who this Agent Kent is. <laughs> and we're hoping that Darren actually does keep himself at the country house and does not try to go to the funeral himself. Mm. <laughs> we don't need him messing up things. So. Mm. And that went in my mind, too. I was like. I hope that he stays at home because, oh, so we'll be seeing what's going to happen. We're going to be uh, staying posted on your page. And like I said, I hope that we're able to do this again. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>